welcome to the Ascent of Mount Carmel YouTube channel. This channel is devoted to a reading and better understanding of the book Ascent of Mount Carmel by St. John of the Cross. Today we're discussing chapter 13, which is a continuation of the discussion that we had last installment. In the last installment we discussed how after we mortify ourselves of the things of the bodily senses, we may supernaturally receive phenomena that have a relation to the perceptions of bodily senses. St. John introduced us to these supernatural phenomena of the senses, which he calls visions of the soul. However, in the following chapters, he's going to suspend his discussion of them, and he'll move on to covering the imagination, and then he'll talk about imaginary visions. Please note that St. John will come back to the visions of the soul in the 23rd chapter, and at that point, and then in the following chapters, he's going to break them down and describe the various kinds of, and their causes. We discussed that we must not desire to receive these types of phenomena, even if they should come from God. St. John gives us six reasons for this. If we desire these types of phenomena, they're going to gradually cause our faith to lessen. This is because things that are experienced by the senses detract from faith. And please remember from previous installments that faith transcends the senses. Instead of staying in the dark night of the senses, where we rely solely on faith as the means to divine union, if we desire these things, the soul will be apt to withdraw itself from faith. The second is that if these types of phenomena aren't rejected, they're going to hinder the spirit. And this is because the soul will dwell, will dwell on the phenomenon rather than advancing by things of the spirit. The third reason is that if we desire these types of things, the soul will become attached to them and won't advance to a resignation and detachment of the spirit. The fourth reason is that if we desire these things, the positive effect of the phenomenon on the soul and the inward spirituality that it would cause will be gradually lost. This will happen if we dwell on the sensual aspect, which is the least important part of the phenomenon. The soul will not fully receive the full benefit of spirituality, which will more likely be received if the phenomenon is rejected. The fifth reason is that the soul will begin to lose the favors of God. This is because it accepts the phenomenon as if it was some sort of earned reward. And I don't talk about this too much, but when I started, when I came back to the church, when I knew I was called to be a priest, um, God blessed me in very special ways. I had a, you know, spiritual experiences, what we call consolations in the spiritual life, mystical experiences were almost a daily occurrence for me. And after a while, I, you know, uh, began feeling very privileged, of course, and, and, um, and you, get, you have to watch out for pride in all its forms. So I remember one time going to my spiritual director, and I was feeling kind of pretty good that, hey, man, I'm a saint in process here. <laughs> you know, uh, wow, look at this. I'm having all this, these spiritual experiences, you know, like, you know, saints, Padre Pio and everything. Yeah, wow. Father, why? why? Oh, God is, God is favoring me with these wonderful spiritual consolations. Why do you think it is, Father, that I'm, I'm being privileged with these wonderful uh, uh, mystical and spiritual consolations? And I won't tell you the word-for-word um, the, 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 the word response to that, but it was something about being a pile of dung who had no, absolutely no ability to do anything and stand on his own two feet, spiritually speaking, and God is dealing with you that way because you are a spiritual and moral basket case who can't even get up on his own two feet and take two steps. <laughs> You're a useless pile of manure. That's why God is dealing with you that way. You're a basket case. Thank you, Father. And he was right. He was absolutely right. We should not rely on our own judgment in these matters, but we should try to find a qualified, experienced, orthodox spiritual director. And please refer to my installment on spiritual direction on this topic, and we're going to talk more about that in the next installment. The sixth reason that we should not go after these types of phenomena is that even if they do come from God, accepting them opens the door to the devil so that he may deceive the soul with similar things. He's much smarter than we are. And he knows how to insidiously disguise things so that they appear to be good and they appear to be from God. For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light.
Satan rejoices when a person wants to receive supernatural revelations because he then has an opportunity to introduce error and provide revelations of which he's the author and not God. If the soul doesn't reject these types of phenomena, it's going to pave way for things that come from the devil and it's going to give him influence over us. His visions will come in place of those of God's and his visions will become to increase while those of God's start to decrease. Eventually, the visions from God will disappear altogether. And finally, the devil will have all power over the soul and God will have none. Since the devil is smarter than we are, we should never assume that we can recognize what comes from God and what comes from the devil. Our only recourse is to reject these types of phenomena so that the errors of the devil can be avoided. St. John tells us that when these phenomena do come from God, he'll most likely eventually withhold them because the soul will become too attached to them and we won't profit by them. However, if they come from the devil, the opposite will happen. When we invite the phenomenon, the devil will increase their frequency and eventually make use of them against us. Now, he doesn't have to go full metal jacket like the Son of Sam situation. In the darkest part of my life, when uh, I, I was no longer in my right mind, when I was ugly and vicious and wicked, in all that darkness, and all that confusion and all that chaos, a lot of that I know today was uh, as a result of demonic oppression. He won't necessarily be talking to us and giving us diabolical errands. He doesn't need to. All he really needs to do is for us to fall into error and put, pull away from us our strict orthodoxy. When the soul is resigned or even adverse to the phenomena, the devil will eventually give up since he sees that his plan isn't working. And while all this is going on, God will likely magnify and increase his graces in us because we are humble and detached. Do you remember the movie A Beautiful Mind? The lead character, John Forbes Nash, had hallucinations, but he learned to ignore them. Now this isn't a perfect analogy because John Forbes Nash had hallucinations, they weren't real. But what we're talking about is very real. We're talking about things that either come from God or come from the devil. John, and you can't ignore me forever. Charles, you've been a very good friend to me. The best. But I won't talk to you again. I just can't. not gone. Maybe they never will be. But I've gotten used to ignoring them and I think as a result they've kind of given up on me. The point is that when we ignore these things they will seem less powerful and less significant. So you see that you'll really never know in this world whether these things have come from God or come from the devil. But you really shouldn't give it much thought either. If you properly reject them it really doesn't matter. If the soul is faithful, humble, and retired, the Lord will likely raise it up a step higher to another level. God first gives us things that are very unpretentious and exterior, such as these things related to the senses. And if we behave as we should and don't get all wrapped up in them, he may grant us even greater favors. And if we conquer the devil with this step, we may pass to the next, and we will continue to make progress through the various levels and hopefully eventually to divine union. St. John reminds us that this is spiritual war warfare, and he likens this to doing battle with the seven-headed beast of the apocalypse. We cut off the first head by denying ourselves the sensual things of this world, and then we cut off the second head through the rejection of the phenomena of the senses of which we're talking about. St. John cautions us that we should be watchful that when we are successful in cutting off the two heads of the beast and ascending even beyond that, the first head of the beast, which is a desire for sensual comfort, entertainment, and these other distractions, they're liable to emerge once again. And throughout this process, this is something we need to be wary about. And when sometimes it does return, St. John warns us that it will come back with a vengeance. 
If you haven't had this type of phenomena, it would be kind of foolish for you to pray for it. And don't worry about missing a step in your progress. Because if you were praying for something like this and you were asking for it, then you're bound to reject it anyways. If you don't experience this, you should be thankful to God that he may have seen fit to allow you just to skip this step entirely. As we said, there is no way to know whether these things come from God or the devil, so you shouldn't dwell on it. If you properly reject it, it won't matter where they came from. So in summary, these phenomena of the senses can't be a means to divine union, since they don't bear any proportion to